जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माई YouTube चैनल एवरीथिंग इज थियोरेटिकली इम्पॉसिबल अंटिल इट इज डन समटाइम्स एन इवेंट और अचीवमेंट एपियर्स टू बी इम्पॉसिबल एंड ओनली द एक्चुअल अकरेंस ऑफ द इवेंट इज एनफ टू डिस्पेल द मिसकनसेप्शन विद दैट पॉजिटिव नोट स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स बिगिन टू डेज सेशन टूडे इन दिस एक्टिविटी और एक्सपेरिमेंट we are supposed to find out the spring constant of a given spring by noting down the time period of oscillation of a loaded spring right so in order to execute this activity or experiment will be requiring a spring a clamp stand slotted weights with hanger and stop watch now students in theory we are aware that if a body is disturbed from its mean position and it executes vibration in such a manner that its acceleration is always directly proportional to its displacement and if the acceleration of the body is always directed towards the mean position then the body tends to execute simple harmonic motion and students in the case of a loaded spring the time period of a loaded spring is given by t equals to 2 pi square root of m by k we have already proved this article in the theoretical section right i will share the link of that theoretical video in the description section so you can refer to that video as well so here m is the mass k is the spring constant and t is the time period time period is the time taken by the body to complete one oscillation so our objective is to determine this value of k by noting down the time period of oscillation So students, if you square both the sides, squaring both the sides, what you get is t square. It would be equal to four pi square m by k, or the spring constant or the force constant. It will be given by four pi square m divided by t square. So students, this is the working formula mathematically by knowing the value of m and noting down the time period of oscillation we can obtain the value of small k right and we can also plot a graph between t square and m and the nature of the graph between t square and m would be a straight line and there we have to consider different masses and note down the time period in the various cases so students we'll be making use of a slotted weight and this is the hanger it is of mass 50 g so it is to be attached at the free end of a suspended spring right and thereafter in step we have to increase the mass by 50 g the mass of the hanger is 50 g and then this is 50 g weight these are known as slotted weights so it can be fitted in the hanger like this so this becomes 100 g then the experiment is to be repeated for 150 g then we can consider the reading of the time taken to complete 10 or 20 oscillations for 200 g and then again by adding one weight the total load becomes 250 g so this is the slotted weights with hanger which we will be using in this experiment right now students the value of the spring constant of the given spring can also be determined by the graph which is obtained between m and t square now as i have stated we will note down the time period of oscillation for different masses for 50 grams for 100 grams 150 200 and 250 grams right and then we will plot a graph between m and t square now students if you consider this particular equation then it can be rearranged in this particular manner t square is equal to 4 pi square divided by k the term inside this bracket is constant multiplied by m now look 4 is constant pi square is definitely constant k for a given spring the spring constant or the force constant is constant right so the term in this bracket is constant so students t square is directly proportional to m 
So if you plot a graph between m and t square, it should be a straight line. It should be a straight line passing through the origin. It should be like this. Ideally, the graph should be like this. Right? And if you compare it with the standard equation of a straight line, then it is y equals to mx. y axis is represented with t square and x axis is represented with the mass. So this will, the term in the bracket, it will give slope of this graph, right? So slope of the above graph, slope of the graph which is plotted between m and t square, it will give us 4 pi square divided by k. So therefore students, from this we conclude that the value of k, which is the spring constant or the force constant of a given spring, it may be given by 4 pi square multiplied by the reciprocal of the slope of this graph. So this is how by plotting graph between m and t square and getting its slope and then multiplying the reciprocal of the slope of this graph with 4 pi square that will give us the value of spring constant of the given spring. Now students let us try to understand the procedure so as to perform this particular experiment. This is students the case of a loaded spring. Now. The loaded spring, when slightly disturbed from its main position and released, it starts executing simple harmonic motion. Now, by noting down the time period of oscillation, the value of the force constant or the spring constant of this given spring can be easily determined. Students, the setup consists of a metal pole with a solid firm base which is used to hold or clamp this spring. Our goal will be to extract a measure of the stiffness of this particular spring when the object has been displaced from its equilibrium position. Now students, this is a hanger which is provided with slotted weights. Each of this slotted weight is of 50 gram. Now here I have used four slotted weights and along with the mass of the hanger it comes out to be 250 grams. This is a stopwatch and it's actually a timepiece which is designed to measure the amount of time that elapses between its activation and deactivation. Now students clicking the start or the stop button we can start or stop the stopwatch. Also by clicking the same button, we can reset the stopwatch and bring the needle back to the normal position. As you can see students, the least count of this stopwatch is 0.1 second. Now we will make use of the stopwatch to note down the time for 20 oscillations. When the loaded spring is slightly disturbed and then released, it starts executing simple harmonic motion. Now here I have made use of 250 grams. Let's count the number of oscillations now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. So students what we find is that for 20 oscillations the time taken is about 11 seconds. Thus the time period of oscillation would be 11 divided by 20 which will be 0 0.55 seconds. Now students we are going to repeat the observation that is trial 2. Let's start the counting of the oscillations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. So students in trial 2 the time for 20 oscillations comes out to be 10.8 seconds and thus the time period for trial 2 would be 10.8 divided by 20 which will be 0.54 seconds. Now let's repeat the observation for the third time that is let's consider trial 3. So let's start counting the oscillations now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. So students, we find that the time taken to complete 20 oscillations is 10.9 seconds in the third trial. So the time period would be 10.9 divided by 20 which will be 0.545 seconds. So students, I hope you have understood the procedure clearly so as to obtain the time period of oscillation. Now, this is the observation table which we'll be using. Now, this is the column for mass which is in grams, right? The mass of the hanger as I stated it's 50 gram and then by adding the masses in steps we can increase the mass in the step of 50 grams. And for each mass or for each load we have to repeat the observation thrice so as to minimize any error. So this is for trial 1, trial 2 and trial 3. And in each of the three cases, we will note down the time for 20 oscillations and then find out the mean of these three trials. Mean is the sum of the observations divided by total number of observations. Then students, in order to find out the time period, which is the time taken by the body to complete one oscillation, we need to divide this time with the number of oscillations. In our case, we have noted down the time for 20 oscillations. So the time period would be t small t divided by 20. And then we need to plot a graph between mass and t square. And this is the working formula to get the value of k. Right? So students, these are the readings corresponding to mass of 50 gram, 100 gram, 150 gram and 200 gram. Now in the video, I have noted down or rather I have shown you the time for measuring the 20 oscillations corresponding to 250 gram and for trial 1 the result obtained was 11 seconds for trial 2 the time which was obtained for 20 oscillations is 10.8 seconds and for trial 3 corresponding to mass of 250 grams the time which the load takes for completing 20 oscillations is found to be 10.9 seconds. So the mean of these three would be 11 plus 10.8 plus 10.9 divided by 3. That would be 10.9 seconds. So students time period which is the time taken by the body to complete one oscillation it would be given by 10.9 divided by 20. So 10.9 divided by 20 it comes out to be point 545. Now squaring this capital T we will get the value of T square 0.4545 multiplied by 0.545 that will give us about 0.297. Now knowing the value of 4 pi square 3.14 whole square mass is 250 gram divided by T square is 0.297. You can make use of calculator and get the value of K. So corresponding to 250 gram Noting down the time period and substituting this value over here, we get the value of spring constant as 33,197.3. And since the mass is measured in gram and time in seconds, so it will be in CGS unit. That is, it will be dyne per centimeter. Right? And similarly, we have noted down the value for the time period for 300 gram as well. So let's complete the observation table. We get its value as 11.9 seconds. Trial 2 corresponding to 300 gram. The time taken for 20 oscillations is obtained to be 12 seconds. And in trial 3, I've got a reading of 12.1 seconds. So now we need to consider the mean of these three. So that would be... 12. So 12 divided by 20 that will give us the time period. So 12 divided by 20 would be 0 0.6 and square of 0 0.6 that will give us 0 0.36. The value comes out to be 32,865.3 dyne per centimeter. 
So students, mathematically, we can easily get the value of spring constant by considering the mean of these values. So the spring factor or the spring constant, which is also known as force constant of the given spring will be given by k is equal to arithmetic mean, which is sum of all the observations divided by total number of observations. So here I have taken 5 observations, right? So it will be k1 plus k2 plus k3 plus k4 plus k5 plus k6 divided by the total number of observations. So that will give us the value. So the value of spring constant in CGS after taking the mean of all the 6 observations is found to be 32,755.4 dyne per centimeter. Now students, we can express the result in SI as well. Now we are aware, 1 Newton is 10 raised to power 5 dyne. So 1 dyne, it would be 10 raised to power minus 5 Newton. So let's try to express it in SI. So what we do is, 32755.4 multiplied by 1 dyne is 10 raised to power minus 5 Newton. And students, 1 centimeter, we are aware it is 10 raised to power minus 2 meter and to the power minus 1. So what we get is 32755.4 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 5 into 10 raised to power minus 2 to the power minus 1. So it will give us plus 2 and the units would be Newton per meter. So that becomes 10 raised to power minus 3. So in SI, the value of spring constant of the given spring, it would be 32.7554 Newton per meter. So you can express it as 32.7 as well after rounding off, right? So in SI, the value of spring constant is 32.7 Newton per meter. So this is through mathematical calculations by using this working formula, right? Now we will obtain the same value of k graphically by plotting graph between m and t square. So students, now let us plot graph between m and t square. The mass which is in grams is represented along x-axis and t square is represented along y-axis. And this is a scale I have used. Along x-axis, this 1 centimeter it is equal to 25 grams, right? And along y-axis, this 1 centimeter is considered to be 0 0.03 seconds square. So, let's plot these values. First one is 50 gram and 0 0.0625. This is 50 gram and 0 0.0625. It can be approximately considered to be 0 0.06 only, right? So, it will be corresponding to 50. It is 0 0.0625, somewhere over here. Then you can write the ordinate and abscissa. So it will be 50 and 0 0.0625. Second one is 100 and 0 0.119. Corresponding to 100, it is 0 0.119. 0 0.119 may be considered to be approximately 0 0.12 only. So this is it. So let's write the coordinates. So it is 100 and 0.119. Right? Third reading is 150 and 1.179. This is 150 and 0.179 would be somewhere over here. So this is 150 and 0.179. Fourth reading is corresponding to 200 gram, T square is 0 0.241. Corresponding to 200 gram, it is 0 0.241. So, this is the point I'm talking about. So, coordinates are 200 and 0 0.241. Fifth reading is corresponding to 250 gram. This is 250 gram. The value of T square is about 0 0.297, somewhere over here. 
so 250 and 0.297 and the last reading is students corresponding to 300 gram the value of t square is 0 0.36 corresponding to 300 gram the value of t square is 0.36 this is the point so if we join these points it should be a straight line look all these points should lie on a straight line so it verifies the fact it verifies the fact that the graph obtained between m and t square is a straight line or the slope of this graph is constant now students how to get the value of slope slope of the graph is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so slope of the graph is let's consider these two points this is point a and let us consider this to be point b let us find out the slope for a straight line the slope between any two points would be constant right let's consider points a and b so y2 minus y1 so it would be 0 0.241 minus this is y2 this is x2 y2 and consider it to be x1 y1 so y2 minus y1 y1 is 0.119 right divided by x2 minus x1 x2 is 200 and x1 is 100 so students the slope of the graph is obtained to be 0 0.122 divided by 100 now we are aware of this the value of the spring constant of the given spring is given by 4 pi square multiplied by the reciprocal of the slope that is the reciprocal of the slope of this graph when multiplied by 4 pi square that will give us the value of spring constant so let's substitute this value 4 multiplied by pi is 3.14 and the slope of this graph is this value so its reciprocal would be 100 divided by 0.122 so students if you solve it what we get is 32,326 0.55 and this is in CGS that is 9 per centimeter and as I have stated students this CGS value it can be converted into SI also it will be 32.32655 Newton per meter so you can write as 32.3 newton per meter so students this is the value of k obtained graphically by plotting graph between m and t square right so students i hope you have understood this experiment thoroughly i mean there shouldn't be any doubt at all so we have calculated the value of k both mathematically as well as graphically so thank you students for watching this video and uh, keep watching and do subscribe my channel so as to receive the new updates right whenever I upload any video you will be getting the updates provided you are subscribed to my channel so keep watching my videos students thank you